Welcome to Cohesion. During Cohesion in Code Control. In this episode, we will show you how to use Visual Studio 2008 with on-demand hosted Subversion repository by Cohesion. Before we get started, there are a couple of prerequisites that you may want to install on your Windows machine. Assuming that you already have Visual Studio 2008 installed, you want to install the Unc SVN plugin. This plugin provides Visual Studio 2008 integration with Subversion. Next, you may also want to install the Tortoise SVN. This Windows Explorer based client will help you with many tasks with Subversion outside of Visual Studio. What I will do next is to show you how to create a new project in our Cohesion web interface. Then, I will show you how to create a new project in Visual Studio and upload that into our Subversion repository. First, to create a new project in our web interface, log into our application. Go to the Projects tab. In this example, I'm going to create a new project called Visual Studio. Once the project is created, you'll be taken to the project dashboard. Here, you will select menu of services to add to this project. One of the great benefits of Cohesion is that we provision these services less than five minutes. I will select Subversion for this particular case and click OK. By default, the creator of the project will have rewrite access to this Subversion repository. And you can see that by seeing who has general access to this particular Subversion repository. And my username is Copello. You can easily grant additional users or groups to have read-write access to all services, not just Subversion, in this project by using the general project access permission. Or if you like, you can define more granular permissions. To do so, click on the Subversion tab and you will see service permissions. Once you click service permissions, you can now add additional users or groups with a specific role for this particular service in this project. So for example, I can grant an SVN developer rewrite or SVN viewer read-only role with a set of users and groups that I want to define. Now let's go back to the project dashboard. The important thing here is that once a service provision, you're now provided with a subversion repository URL. This is a URL you will use with Visual Studio to connect your Visual Studio project into this Subversion repository. Let's see how we do that. I'm now in my Visual Studio 2008 IDE. I will go ahead and create a new project here. I will select ASP.NET Web Application and I will call the project Project 1. I'm not going to create a directory for the solution and I'm going to click this button called Add to Subversion. When I click OK, Visual Studio will create the default file that's required for this particular project. After you finish doing that, it will take you to the Add to Subversion dialog box. The first thing you want to do is you want to copy the Subversion repository URL into the repository URL input box. You will see that now we have a Visual Studio folder that's already created on that project. I'm going to clear the project name. The reason is because I don't want to create an extra subfolder within the Visual Studio repository that I have already created. It's also possible for you to follow Subversion naming convention by adding a trunk. I'm going to keep things simple and not going to do that. Once I click OK, I'll be taking the default.aspx edit page. A couple of things to note, you will see that we have project 1 and we have plus signs next to these files and folders. What this means is that they're ready to be added into our Subversion repository. To do so, right click on the project and select commit project changes. You will see a screen to ask for a log message or a commit message and this will be our initial import.
Now, as you go through this process, you may be prompted to enter a username and password. This is because as Visual Studio through Unc SVN interacts with our Subversion repository, it will ask you for your username and password. In that case, you will use the same username and password to log into the web interface as you would log into our Subversion repository. For example, my username will be Copello. Now let's make change to default.aspx and see how we can check in our code or changes into the Subversion repository. I will add an additional div tag in here and save. You will see that there is now a red square showing up to default.sps. This means that you have made a change in your local copy. To commit this file, I can right click, commit, add my commit message, and click OK. And now I just checked the new version of the file and changes into Cohesion Subversion repository. To see that I've properly done that, I can see a history of the versions. To do so, I right click on the file, click View History, and you will see that I have two versions of the default.aspx file. One is the initial import, one from the file that I just changed a moment ago. Now that I have finished my changes, I will go ahead and close this project. Now imagine next time you come in and you want to change this project again. You open up project one, which has a local working copy of the subversion files on your local machine. The first thing you want to do is you want to update. You want to update your project with the latest changes that maybe some other developers have done onto your local copy. In this case, you right click on project and update to latest version. This will get the latest project files down to your local working copy. 